Slimo. Don't lick the headlights. Good advice. Definitely. Because they are not... What What, what do you think they cops. are? Cobbs. Cobbs. He thought they were cops. Okay. <laughs> Slimo! <laughs> the Great Land of Small? That is correct. The Great Land of Small, 1986. Holy shit. Directed by Vojtek Jasny. I'm probably mispronouncing that. Uh, he was a big part of the Czech New Wave back in the 60s and 70s. And then in the 80s, French Canada decided to, you know, give him a children's film. Because that made sense. Mm -hmm. Drugs. And... Drugs. And this really feels like a Czechoslovakian art film from the 60s, let me tell you. <laughs> Ooh, boy. Who <laughs> boy. Okay, so... Do we start... Jesus Christ, where do we start? Do we start with the little guy? No. They're aerobicizing. With their mom. Right. Is that where we start? Mm -hmm. I think so. Oh, right, because we get that weird wide-angle shot with the crotch, center bottom frame, and the legs moving around. Right. This is the mom. Um, cause she's some sort of trapeze performer. Mm-hmm. And the kids are going to have to go with her on vacation to her parents' house in the country. Right. Specifically, uh, Quebec. That's not a country, but you know what I mean. It's assumed that these people live in Toronto, or one of the cities that Toronto always pretends to be. But now they're going to go to Quebec, um, and uh, the, the boy wants to bring his dog, Willie? Yeah. He will. Okay, and uh, the, the mom's like, no, you can't bring your Willie. And, um, <laughs> and she wants him to go home and go to bed, and they're like, can't we just watch you do the trapeze? And she's like, okay, fuck it. She does the trapeze. She's pretty good, right? Yeah. And um, so now we do we get the little man in the woods? Yes. Okay, little. Uh, okay, Jesus Christ, this character. This Wait, is. This it's is, either we get it now or we get it right after the tree scene, but I'm not. Or it doesn't maybe matter. even before any of this, but actually, I think it was before because. First thing we see is like these weird shots of the ground and then this white horse in the woods and fog. My first note is definitely mom is an acrobat. Okay, okay. Anyway, so there's weird shots of the woods and there's a white horse in the fog and there's a dude Merlin. running around. Yeah, the, the horse, horse is, is named, named is Merlin. Merlin. Yes. I caught that much. There's a reindeer. The d there's a dude walking around named what? Mimic? Mimic. Yes. Yeah, did I have him here? I do not. Okay, so... He's running from a man named Flanagan. Yeah, yeah. Um, and after a Mimic runs away, um, this, this short fellow shows up. He's a leprechaun, I guess. No, it's sort of implied As that. close as a leprechaun as we're going to get in this film. So this is Fritz. Fritz is played by Michael J. Anderson from Twin Peaks and Carnival. Good actor. He was great. In Twin Peaks, he's the, the guy who shows up in people's dreams and talks backwards. And he dances. Mm -hmm. Does he actually talk backwards, or is he like that other guy from the 80s? No, no, he actually talks backwards, and then they play it backwards. And then they have to subtitle it because it's kind of hard to understand, but, you know. Yeah, they spell everything out for him phonetically. Yeah. It's they pretty did, cool, actually. Yeah, they did that with all the characters in Dreams. Although it was kind of cheesy in the series finale, where one of his lines was, lines was Wow, Bob, wow! <laughs> you don't even need subtitles for that one. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, great actor. Um... Not the best performance of his career, I believe. Yeah, well, it must have been kind of... Eh, work's work. He's a working actor. He was, anyway. 
Um, not a lot of dignified work for uh, little people back then. No. So, yeah, he is some sort of leprechaun uh, prancing about the forest with his bag of magical gold, which he wants to uh, give to a human to give them magical powers to find out if people are, like, good now or if they're going to try to subjugate the world. That's a terrible plan. Yeah. Anyway, he, he's, he's a dipshit and he drops his magical bag of gold and the guy who finds it is Flanagan. Yep. Flanagan is played by a sort of a knockoff Stacy Keach. Mm-hmm. With the mustache, I kind of got a Burt Reynolds vibe, but only slightly. Oh, he like has a mustache. Very slight. He definitely has a mustache. He does have a mustache, I'll give you that much. <coughs> so. So, I think... I think Mimic shows up and uh, and Flanagan goes chasing after him. Mm-hmm. Oh wait, no, they see a reindeer and they try to shoot it. Oh yeah, so so Fritz jumps up, rides the reindeer. This is how he drops his fucking gold: is he's riding the reindeer, gets hit by a branch, and and, and drops, and the reindeer keeps going, saved by Fritz. But Fritz drops his gold. Flanagan finds the gold and then chases after Micmac. Mimic. Mimic. Where'd you get Micmac? Don't know. Are you alright today? Micmac. Okay. Never seen that film, mind you. What's that thing? The Micmacs? I think it's, uh... It's French thing. Doesn't matter. So... Well, then it fits. Sure. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, that's basically where we leave these people for now. Sure. So, well, yes, um, the kid's in a tree, and his dog's just sitting out on the sidewalk. Yep. And the kid keeps telling his dog how he's not going to go without him. Right. Yeah, uh, to Quebec, as we've uh, talked before. By the way, this kid, the kid named David, is played by an actor named Michael Bluen. He sounds familiar. Uh, he's now a stuntman. Oh, cool. Oh. Yeah. Fair number of mainstream roles and shit. But, you know, uh, stuntman. And, uh, I don't think he would have guessed that from his earlier uh, career here as a small <laughs> child, but, hey, life uh, moves in directions. So, eventually, the mom comes out, climbs up a rope, and says, no, we're not taking the dog to Quebec. And you're making me angry, get your butt in the house and pack. Yeah, yeah, I kind of wanted her to just shove him out of the tree, but no such luck. So they they drive off to Quebec, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, they take a bus. Do they? Because they end up in a car. Yeah, that's, that's your grandpa's car. Oh, grandpa's car, you're right. They take but the... while they're on the bus, we get a shot of Flanagan's daughter? Oh, yeah, Flanagan has a daughter. And she's on the fire escape watching her dad talk to his employees? Eventually, uh, once she puts on pants. Right. She gets out of bed, puts on pants, and go watches her dad talk to his employees. Dad, your coffee's ready. Yeah, yeah. Her name's Sarah, I think. Yes. Okay. She has very large hair. Yes. It looks like any second is going to gain sentience and leave. <laughs> yeah. And at this point, I start to become perplexed as to why there are so many fucking characters in this movie. Right? Like, it's, it's kind of a lot for this early in the movie. Especially since most of them, like, haven't done much yet. And a fair number kind of don't really do anything. That's true. Okay, so, um, uh, the family uh, meets up with Grandpa. And I think maybe Grandma's there, yep. but maybe not. Grandma's there. Yeah. And they all load into the convertible and take off down the road. But the road is blocked off by Flanagan, who has his men poking around with sticks to find an invisible man. Or rabbit eggs. That, right. He says that later, yeah, because a cop shows up to stop them their, their stick poking. Because he also said they're looking for deer tracks. Yeah. And it is, it is hunting season. Right. 
Um, or so they tell us. Yeah, yeah. So, uh... Rabbit uh, eggs is illegal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, poaching rabbit eggs is illegal, he says. Which, you know, it's true. Definitely. Never poach rabbit eggs. Always boil them. I was going to say pan fry. But, uh... Do rabbits even lay eggs? They no. Don't, they don't lay <laughs> eggs. However, you can probably cut them suckers out. Like caviar. Yeah. <sighs> Rabbit ovaries. We've hurt him again. <laughs> Just fry them suckers up. Okay. By the way, the cop, I believe, character is Patrick O'Toole. Yeah. Played by Jack Langdick. Sorry, Long Dick? I don't know which one's worse. Jack uh, Long Dick. Or Long Dick. Yeah, Patrick O'Toole. Pat, Pat O'Toole. Jack Long Dick. Okay, uh, from uh, Left Behind. Uh, the Kirk Cameron one, not the Nick Cage one. He was like the crazy conspiracy theorist who sets uh, Kirk Cameron off on the uh, conspiracies behind the Antichrist. Okay. Jack Long Dick. So... Oh, by, by the way, one of Flanagan's men in all this, I'm not sure which one, he's just credited as one of Flanagan's men, uh, is played by Guy Sanquois, uh, who was a creative director for Cirque du Soleil. Not I when, fucking knew it. Not when this was made, mind you, but like through the 90s to today. I think he did his last big show, credit on the IMDb anyway, in 2017. Did I not mention Cirque du Soleil in the you fucking did. beginning of the Immediately, film? Immediately, when, when the mom starts doing the trapeze stuff and the kids are wowed, you're like, what, they've never seen Cirque du Soleil? <laughs> Is that French-Canadian? Oh, no. It might be. Anyway, that's all the notes I have for this film. Perfect. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> so what else? No. Okay, so, no, we have... Very important things to discuss eventually. Life-changing things, but for the moment... Grandpa has a cat. Grandpa does have a cat. Nice cat. Very pretty, pretty fat big. cat. Big old cat. And so the little girl just picks up the cat and starts running <laughs> with the fucker. That cat is so chill. He yeah. is chill, but eventually she does have to put him down. Well, and yeah. And he takes off. Wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, it depends on circumstances. If a little girl managed to pick me up and run with me, I'd kind of be like, you know what? Fuck it. Give her this one. <laughs> Good point. Good yeah. point. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, the kids, despite their earlier whining about this, are super psyched to be there. Because Grandpa's going to tell them stories. Yeah, Grandpa tells them about how there are invisible magic creatures in the woods, and they're very cute. Because he saw one when he was younger. You can only see him... If you believe in magic. If you believe in magic in a young girl's heart. So... I tried so fucking hard this entire movie not to fucking say that phrase right there. <laughs> Fair enough. You just can't trust him. <laughs> David just wants to play baseball. Just wants to play baseball, does not own a bat. At just one point, he's about to use a Not even a ball, a just a mitt. He never gets around to it. He has a mitt, but I think he lost it. He says he has a mitt. We never see the it mitt. It never shows up. As far as I know. I'm not even sure I saw a baseball in this fucking movie. That's what movie. I'm saying! I didn't see one fucking baseball! David loves the concept of baseball, but does not fully understand it. He keeps wanting to play baseball with people who have clearly never played baseball in their lives. Well, they're Canadian, not American. It's not their pastime. I, I swear to God, Toronto has a baseball team that has been, like, in the playoffs and shit at some point. But I don't know baseball, so I might be making this up. I'm not sure. So. Blue Jays? No. No? I don't... I don't know. So in the comments... <laughs> If anyone ever sees this review, uh, let us know uh, what, what baseball team I'm thinking of, because I'm not going to research it. 
Anyway, so... If I had my phone on me, I'd Google it, but it's charging. <laughs> yeah, fuck that shit. So... So do they just run out into the woods the, the next day and go find a fucking leprechaun? Yeah. Yeah, they well, the, the no, end of the he says you have to find him at the end of the rainbow. So they find the end of the rainbow, and it's a shitty rainbow because it goes straight from yellow to blue with no green. Mm -hmm. Yo, what? You're right. Yeah. Except for in the close-up, when they're all in the colored fogs, there's a green. Somewhere in there. I'm not sure it's in the right spot. So How do you fuck up Roy G. Biv? Right? <laughs> what the fuck, guys? So, uh, they run into the rainbow, and it's all, like, weird and shit. And, uh, this is when they run into the leprechaun, I believe. Who's trying to use the rainbow bridge to go home to the great land of small. Um, but when he tries to leave, the rainbow gets away from him. Yep. And he has to come back. Because he wasn't fast enough because he dilly-dallied talking to the kids. Yes. So it's their fucking fault. So now he just goes home with them. Yeah. And they give him, what, cookies and soda? Sandwiches. Sandwiches, Sandwiches and soda, sorry. Yeah, yeah. And he likes soda. I got cookies on the brain. He likes soda, and it makes him burp, but when he doesn't burp because the little girl tells him not to burp, he floats up into the air and has to burp. When we did a search for The Great Land of Small to find this movie on YouTube and watch it, sorry, bootlegs, mm, you know, how the sausage is made, but uh, it, it, it wasn't on Netflix, man. Okay. What am I going to do? Find the first four of these movies? This was part I, five, by the way. We forgot to mention, this is a part five. I believe it's like uh, like a Canadian TV thing or something. Yeah, but still, this was part five. I don't know what the other stories are, but I believe they are unconnected. <laughs> we don't know for sure. Yeah, so... Any of our French-Canadian fans, please let us know. Yeah, uh, if you exist. So, <laughs> so... Could happen. Jesus Christ. So, after the... Anyway, when we did our search, like, one of the first results was burping scene. The next was Slimo. Slime. And you were very unanswerable about Slimo, which okay. made me worried. Okay, so I had <laughs> told these people, but I didn't want to spoil anything, right. but I told them that uh, I, I You had a new movie. God and Savior, is what yes. he said. yes. I picked this movie because I saw a clip that was on the YouTube channel, Everything is Terrible. And, um, and yes, I found my new religion, my Lord and Savior. <laughs> and so they're like, is it the burping scene? And I'm like, no. And then he says, is it Slimo? And I did not answer because I didn't want to spoil it for them. <laughs> but it is Slimo. We will get to Slimo. If we hurry up. I love Slimo. Well, no, okay. we'll get to him anyway. Regardless, so, yes, uh, they have the burping scene, and then Mom comes in, so they cover the invisible man with a blanket, because they're idiots. I thought it was a towel, but okay. It was in the car. Ah, okay. So they, they take it, and they, they put it on the invisible man, and Mom's like, why do you have this blanket in, in a lump? In a lump, yeah. And he, she, she pulls it off, and that seems weird. And then they're like... Oh, she can't we see We have him. to go to bed. <laughs> What, what do you mean? Wait, you wait, can't no, she see asked him? about all the fucking sandwiches. Yeah, they ate a shitload of sandwiches, and to cover for it, David takes them over and starts feeding sandwiches to the horses. Horses yeah. like peanut butter, too. Except, mm. I hope those weren't peanut butter sandwiches, because they clearly also had lettuce on them, and I think some tomato. Gross. Lettuce, peanut butter, and tomato. Uh, oh, hold on, you're gonna make me sick. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. I was not ready for that combo. I was taking notes, I think. So, that would be the result. No, um... <laughs> so, yeah, they're all like, we want to go to bed now. And so so the mom's like, you're, you're fucking weird, but whatever. I'm an 80s <laughs> if I, mom. If I told my mom when I was, what, eight? I, you want to give or take on these kids' ages? If I told my mom at eight I wanted to go to bed, she'd be like, the fuck? Like, yeah, she sick. would know... Something's up. She'd be like, she'd start like checking me for a fever or something. Mm -hmm. Well, this, understand, this is an '80s mom. Her job as a mom is to 
chuck the kids out the front door in the morning and open the door so they can come back, you know, at like dinner, midnight. Yeah. Yes. If you weren't home by the time the streetlights came on, you'd get an ass whooping. Except apparently not even that in this case, but, um, yeah, you just send them out into the wilderness and maybe they come back. <laughs> yeah. You hope. Yeah. That, that's how we were raised. Yeah. And look at what fucking happened to me. <laughs> well, look at what keeps happening to me. <laughs> so anyway, uh, the kids, uh, after their mother checks on them, and, and the dwarf, uh, um, uh, what's his name, Fritz? Fritz. Fritz, Fritz little, uh, little Fritz, played by Anderson, of course, great actor, uh, like, creepily follows her around while she does it. Anyway, the kids were faking sleeping, so they all run out to... No, they summon the dog. They summon the dog with, it, with Fritz's magic. magic powers. It's his second spell, I think. Uh-huh. No. He says it's his second spell. He might be wrong, but he says it. And he has to, like, walk in a circle with him, doing weird movements while saying, you know, from over the rainbow I summon the, oh, dark hound of Satan, or whatever the fuck he says. He's not summoning Cerberus. And so he summons Willie the dog. He said, no, no, specifically he said we're going to free Willie. Yes, he did he say that. He said we're going to free Willie. This is in 86, years before free Willie. We're going to free Willie. So anyway, um, he uses his magic power to grab David's Willie and bring him there. Um, and now, now they just have the dog with them. Yep. Do they just go to sleep, or do they go out someplace with the dog at night? No, they, they go, go to go sleep. With the dog until the next day. Yeah. Okay, so next day they fuck off into the woods. They gotta go find Mimic. They gotta go find Mimic. I don't remember why, but that's what they said. Wait, no, I think they have to go find Mimic because, like, um, Fauntleroy, Fantana... Flanagan? Flanagan. Walt Flanagan's dog. Uh, Flanagan, uh, like, sees them, figures out they're with the invisible little person, and chases after them. So, like, we gotta go get to Mimic. And they get to Mimic's place, and uh, Mimic is like... Something? Does he distract Flanagan? Yeah, so that they can uh, take a boat? Yeah, they, he puts him in, in a canoe, and, and, and Fritz is like, I hate canoes and I hate water. And then they go into the fucking rapids. But he says he hates water when they first meet him because they say he's stinky and he doesn't yeah. like baths. Yeah. So they're all there, th them and, and, and the... And Fritz and the dog. The dog disappears. Yeah, on and off the dog is in there. Which makes sense, because a dog in that situation would just hug the floor of the boat. Yeah. I'm also trained to be on a boat, but I don't think... Seems Willie unlikely for Willie, yeah. yeah. He was whining when they put him into the boat. He was a city dog. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah, he was, he was whining when they put him into the boat. Mm -hmm. And it was like, clearly they dubbed in the whining, but also clearly that dog did not want to go in that boat. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, they go into the fucking rapids and they're going to die, so Fritz has to use his third wish. Or maybe it's his fourth, I don't remember. It's the fourth, isn't it? I don't remember what the third was. Maybe something to do... Oh, yeah, the third was to delay um, uh, Flanagan and his people. Mm. Briefly. Is that why they kept tripping? It's, it's, I think he made their cars like flip oh, around yeah, and he... shit. The car was, like, going to hit them, mm -hmm. and he made it back off and back off and back off. And turned backwards and then forwards again and mm -hmm. shit. So, uh, yeah, he uses his fourth wish to take them to the Great Land of Small. He only has right. five wishes to him, by the way. Right. So he heads off to the Great Land of Small, um, you know, and they go there, and it's like... Butterflies! Yeah, it's people dressed as butterflies flying around, and other people dressed, like people in purple costumes and shit. It's, I guess, a little Cirque du soleil -y. Yes. They meet the queen who looks just like their mom, only they don't recognize her. And the king looks exactly like Fritz, because it's his brother. Yeah. Yep. So, from this we can surmise 
that the queen is actually the twin sister of their mom, even though she's 300 years old. No, 300. 500. 500. They were celebrating their 300th. 500th anniversary. 500th anniversary? So, so she's 500 plus however old she was when she got married. So... That's yeah. a good marriage. So, you know... They're, they're I wish like, I could be married for 500 years. Yeah. Well, it depends on who. Yeah. So anyway, they're there and it's like... I'm assuming if I last 500 years, it's a good fucking marriage. Yeah. <laughs> or a really bad one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... So the queen's all like, so do they know that they can never go home again? And Fritz is like, ix nay on the ever nay om hey, but not not literally, but you know. But yeah, I'll, I'll tell him. And she's, she goes to the king, she's like, I wish we could have kids, we can't have kids. How about we just take these kids and slime-o them? That's a great idea. Then they can be butterflies. And we'll have kids forever. And it's like, whatever. So they keep mentioning casually to these kids that they're going to be slime-o'd. The kids are like, what's a slime-o? <laughs> well, well, you know, if you get slime-o'd, you live forever and you, you, know, you can be happy. Oh, by the way, you're, you're never going home again. I just thought I'd mention that. But, you know, anyway, so, so good for you on being slime-o'd. A lot of, lots of people like that. So, <laughs> so then they meet, what, the captain of the guard or some shit? The gatekeeper. The gatekeeper and his dog. Munch. His dog, Munch. Munch is just... A dude. <laughs> I thought the dog was mutt. The I thought so too, but then they clearly said munch. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, munch is is this this dude with a a hair mask. What was that show with uh, Frodo about the dog? Oh fuck! I think they called it Willard. No, Wilfred? Manfred? Something? Maybe Wilfred. Anyway. Okay, so... Shay watched it, I think. Doesn't it end when the fucking dog dies? I don't know, I never watched it. You'd have to ask Shay. Okay. Shay, doesn't it end when the fucking dog dies? <laughs> anyway, so... Jesus Christ. So eventually they, they get to the Slimo ceremony, which... Dear God in heaven. No, wait, heaven. we missed the cops. Oh, yeah, so there are cops in the gatekeeper's weird tunnel place, and his dog likes to run up and eat them. The cops in the Great Land of Small are glowing orbs that float through the air. Yeah. And apparently they're quite safe for people in dog suits to eat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think we get a flash sideways to the real world. Oh, where yes. Where there's a search party. Yeah, yeah, and also uh, Walt Flanagan's dog is, um... Oh, uh, he has gone mad with power from his uh, bag of gold dust. Well, no, first he's magic. got to steal from his own daughter. He does. He to takes get that away. last piece of gold. Okay, so, so which we Mimic, to say. Mimic goes into the bar where the daughter works and gives her a piece of gold in a kind of, like, uncomfortable way for a dude this old and a girl this young. And when the dude clearly has mental problems, but she's all like, thanks. And then her dad steals it. And, mm -hmm. and she notices it's gone. She's, she looks at the photo of her dad like, fuck you. <laughs> right. Um, but anyway, at one, one day she walks in and her dad is like summoning Burning down fucking the bar. demons. Like, it's... <laughs> yeah. He, he has gone mad with power. He is the dark wizard Flanagan now. Anyway, back in the great land of small. Now Holy we're at the slime. -o. Slime o. Slime o. <laughs> oh, by the way, they kept all chanting. people are looking for these kids. They're yeah. missing. Yeah, we mentioned oh, the yeah. search party. Okay. Slime o. They have to chant his name to summon him. Slime o. Slime o. Slime o. Slime -o. I love Slimo. Slimo <laughs> is my lord and savior. Slimo is my god. Slimo is my life. Slimo kind of looks like a green caco demon from Doom. Slimo also kind of looks like uh, what's that Pokemon? Oh, coughing. Coughing. Yeah. Coughing. Yeah. Coughing. Uh, Slimo 
kind of looks like a beholder a little yes, bit, but yes, with without, less eyes. Yeah, yeah. Slimo is a delight. <laughs> oh, he's adorable. Slimo <laughs> is an evil, lumpy beach ball, and he whoa, is the whoa, best whoa. thing. Who said he was evil? He's granting people eternal life. True, true. And spitting out gold dust. He does that a lot, too, yes. And the gold dust is magical. Yes. Slimo. Slimo. So, okay, they have this big ritual where everybody stands around and shouts, Slimo, Slimo. And then Slimo rises out of the slime, and he is as we have described. And sometimes his one eye is way bigger than the other, and it's so mm-hmm. great. They put Slimo on the poster for this fucking movie. Fuck yeah, well, they yeah. Did. <laughs> How could you not? So Slimo rises up and and like goes across the crowd. And people are reaching up to touch his slimy lumps, and it's so great. <laughs> And then he goes back in to, to the, the, the slime pit. again. To and the it's pit. time for the sacrifices. <laughs> Give your life to Slimo. <laughs> so so there's these two people who, who like argue about shit. And so the, the king and queen are like, okay, you're going to get slime mode, but this is the last time you get slime mode. Next time we just send you to Earth. Yeah. We banish you. Yeah. So then they, they, they push him down the slide into Slimo's pit. And they're like, okay, just leave him there for a while before they come back out. Let him marinate. Yeah. And then the next person to go down is this old lady who, who, who always wanted to be closer to the sky. Right. So she goes down the slide, happy as fuck, right into Slimo's pit. Whoop, she's gone. She comes back out as a butterfly. Yeah, a butterfly. A person in a butterfly suit comes out flying, yep. delighted. Everyone's so happy. Slimo. <laughs> and Slimo comes back out of the hole again, spits up some more gold dust. I love Slimo so much. <laughs> Slimo's pretty neat. Slimo is a part of me. Have you accepted our Lord and Savior Slimo into your life? Well, into my heart, yes. Have you accepted <laughs> our Lord and Savior Slimo? <laughs> <laughs> no. Blasphema! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the kids don't want to get slime out because they have something against eternal life and happiness. To be but fair, they want to go home to mom and grandpa, and they they never can. So to be fair, the kids don't necessarily reject slimo; sure. they just stand there and look confused. Until Fritz runs up and says, "Okay, fuck it. I'm using my last witch to get you home, because wait, you're not. You're the not, gatekeeper was in on it because he promised also, to keep them safe forever. Yeah, and it's like, okay, uh, whatever. But Slimo, <laughs> you felt betrayed. Yeah. Yeah, we need a whole movie about Slimo. Slimo. <laughs> well, we didn't watch one through four. Oh yeah, they're all about Slimo." <laughs> All Slimo backstory. It's the Slimo prequels. <laughs> we see how he got to be Slimo. Started out as just Mel. No. Um, but seriously, I am going to start a church based around Slimo. Slimo. I'm sure Shay would help you with that one. We need to start this cult. Slimo. Slimo. I, I just need a pit. Full of slime. And if I pray hard enough, Slimo will come. And then I can feed him people. Okay, so, uh, the kids go back home to Earth, and it's like, God damn it, no more Slimo. Yeah. So, stuff happens, and then the movie ends eventually? I mean, I, once they get back to Earth, uh, Sarah finds them? Yeah, and they go home, and, and they're all like, we went to a magical land and met yeah, Slimo. No, they just have fucking shock. <laughs> yeah, and, and the parents are like, they're, they're imaginative. It's and, not the parents, it's the mom and the cop, right? Because yeah. the cop's oh, kind of yeah, yeah. flirting with her. We didn't really mention that. Yeah. But they're old friends. Yeah. 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 Anyway, so, but yeah, her parents are there too, and they're like, you know. Yeah, but. 
And uh, eventually the sister tells the brother, stop talking about magic and invisible men and Slimo. They're going to think you're crazy. Yes. So that night they sneak out with everybody. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because they, the, the people show up at their window? Well, no, they had to go looking for them because they got separated through the t uh, magic portal. But I'm pretty sure they just show up at the window, or at least some they of them do. Right. Like like the gatekeeper, maybe? Yeah. yeah. And Munch? Yeah, it seems likely. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, Frisk is in the barn with your dog. I'm sorry, Frisk? Fritz. Fritz. Fritz, Fritz. Sorry. okay, good. So... Uh, once they have that settled, they have to go find the bag of magic? Yes. So they decide to go find Mimic. Yes, so they find Mimic. And is this when Flanagan is setting out to hunt down Mimic? Yes. Well, again, yeah. Yeah. Because Flanagan, he has that, 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 uh, that pouch of magic gold and he wants more from Mimic. And Mimic knows about the invisible magic men. Right. Now, at this point, Flanagan should be able to see the invisible people. Yeah. You would think, because he has a bag of magic. Yeah, he clearly believes in magic. Because he's using it. Yes. Yeah, that's a puddle. Well, although yeah. I'm not sure if after this point he actually, like, is in the same scene with the invisible people. Because he has his own fucking character arc after this. Yeah, you're right. Anyway, so he goes out into the woods with his people, and his daughter follows. Right. They find her on the road, because her truck almost hits Munch. Oh, yeah, yeah, and then Munch comes up to her, her door, it's like... And Verbatim. And yeah. she's like... And then, Verbatim. And the little girl's like, oh, hey, uh, did, are you all right? And she's like, I just saw a horrible monster. Oh, no, did, did you, you hit him? <laughs> so you saw him. Yeah. So, oh, so he's okay? Oh, thank God. That's Munch. He's okay. Just don't blink. <laughs> no, no, you, you have to blink. Yeah, yeah. If you don't blink, he will think you're okay to eat. So remember to blink. Don't not blink. Okay, so... So, Jesus wept. So, um, anyway, she takes them up the mountain to find her dad. Yeah, the broken glass mountain. Okay, yeah, the <laughs> holy work while they're walking on this hill sounds like they're walking on broken glass. I think it's supposed to be uh, slate or, or shale, shale or, or something. something like that. It just sounds like they're walking on broken glass. It's very disconcerting. Yes. Mm -hmm. There are no, like, earthy sounds to go along with this. Just... Clink, w clink, clink. Just walking on broken glass. Clinkers. As it, it clinks against itself and breaks. Very disconcerting. I think there's a bit of a chase scene here. Yeah. Uh, uh, a mimic gets tied to a tree, and they have to distract all the bad guys by having... A but, car do donuts. Yeah, yeah. Um, the gatekeeper steals their fucking car and does donuts. And so they, they, they rescue Mimic. And Mimic is an idiot, so he, has, so he says, uh, You go ahead, I'll, I'll, I'll hold him off. Mm -hmm. And it's like, dude, the car's already doing that. But he's all like, ah, hey, guys. And they're all like, Mimic's getting away. And they abandon the car. And it's like, dude, if you'd fucked off, they would have just kept chasing the car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You dumb fuck. So they, they chase after Mimic, and things happen. Sarah goes up the mountain to get her dad, and he hits her with magic and knocks her down the hill. Yeah, because the dad... And wakes him up. The dad went up the hill to do his magical thing with his magical gold dust, and so magic is everywhere. And then Sarah's like, Dad, what the fuck? Stop being, like, an evil sorcerer. Mm -hmm. and, and his magic is like... Fuck you! And sends her just rolling down the hill of broken glass. Mm -hmm. Yep. I wanted her to just have like chunks of fucking rock stuck in her face when he rolls her over. Oh, when he picks her up, he has to dust her face off. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh, you're kind of right. Mm, kind, not right enough. But she's alive somehow. Mm -hmm. Because trust me, this was not a pleasant fall down a hill. Now she rolled down the hill. Yeah. Anyway, that woke his ass up. Yeah. So now he's like, I no longer. Uh, and um, covet the powers 
uh, of the dark forces. Um, and he left his bag of magic. Not up his on bag. He he left Fritz's bag of magic okay. up on the hill, so Fritz and everybody get it back. Right. Now, even with a bag of magic, Fritz can't do magic anymore because he used up all his magic. Right. Yet somehow they send Willie back to the kennel or whatever. That is with the gatekeeper's magic. Right. Mm. But now Fritz is doomed to walk the earth mm. and refuses to tell his only friend, well, his two best friends, the little kids, about it. So he, I think, ends up living with Mimic. Or Mimic yep. finds a way to get in there because Mimic has magic too. Right. Mimic does have some magic, but it just goes as far as like. Summoning Merlin, the magic horse. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, that's the end of the goddamn movie. Basically, yeah, yeah there's some terrible songs also, but yeah. Song. It's the one song! No, there's, no, there's another terrible oh. song earlier in the film. And they play them in their entirety. Yes. So this movie's a mixed bag. On the one hand, it's boring, feels very long, the characters are very bad. On the it other hand... It did feel a lot longer than it was. I don't know why or how that worked the way it did, but I was just like... This movie should have ended by now. Mm -hmm. I think it's because, one, the scenes are bad, but two, there are a lot of them and there's a lot happening in them. But on the other hand, slime-o, 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 slime-o. Slimo. <laughs> anyway, I love Slimo. Yeah, I know you do. I gotta see if there's action figures or something. Right? I should try to make a T-shirt or something, there just for myself. Slimo, just a picture of him. <laughs> Can I have one? If I end up making it, sure, sure. Just no context, no words, just a picture of Slimo. <laughs> Slimo. <laughs> Slimo. Anyway, so, bad movie, great Slimo. Yes. 